Welcome to section 4.3, Identities and Algebraic Transformation of Expressions. At the end of this section, you should be able to answer these questions. What is an identity? What is the difference between an algebraic transformation and proving an identity? What is a conjugate binomial? How can conjugate binomials be helpful when working with transformations and identities? What are the general steps to aid in transforming trigonometric expressions and proving identities? In this section, what we'll be doing is taking one side of an expression and manipulating it, either algebraically or trigonometrically, until we reach a point where it matches the other side of the expression. We'll have two types of expressions or problems. One will be a transformation, the other will be proving an identity. With the transformation, we can only go in one direction. We can only work on the left side of the equation until it resembles the right side. The right side of the equation must remain untouched. Here's an example. Transform sine x times cotangent x into cosine x. We'll be using the identities we learned about in the last section to aid us in this transformation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that sine x cotangent x and rewrite cotangent x as cosine x over sine x because that's one of our quotient properties. Now with my multiplication I'm allowed to cancel out my sine x's and I'm left with cosine x which matches my goal. Here's another example of a transformation. Transform cosine squared x minus sine squared x into 1 minus 2 sine squared x. In looking at this problem, I notice that on the right-hand side, all I have for trigonometric functions is the sine squared. But on the left-hand side, I have a cosine squared and a sine squared. So I need to eliminate the cosine squared. Here's where I can use a Pythagorean identity and replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared x. Continue with the minus sine squared x from the expression. And that simplifies to 1 minus 2 sine squared x, which matches my goal. Now let's look at what it means to prove an identity. With an identity, we can choose either side of the equal sign to work on until we've created two expressions that match. However, nothing may cross over the equality sign. You can manipulate one side or the other, multiply by a strange form of one, replace with identities, but you may not change the value of either side of the equality sign. So here we have 1 plus cosine x times the quantity 1 minus cosine x, and we have to show that it's the same as sine squared x. Well, take a step back. Take a look at what's different on both sides. On the right-hand side, we have one term. On the left-hand side, we have two terms being multiplied. So my first instinct is to actually do the multiplication and see what happens. So. 1 plus cosine x times 1 minus cosine x can be reduced to 1 cosine squared x, a plus b times a minus b. And then we can use the Pythagorean theorem because 1 minus cosine squared x is the same as sine squared x, which means that we have matched the right-hand side of the expression. Here's another example of proving an identity. Prove that cotangent of a plus tangent of a is equal to cosecant of a times secant of a. So again, let's focus on what's different and how we can remove those differences. I see at least one algebraic difference and one trigonometric difference. On the left-hand side, we have a sum, and on the right-hand side, we have a product. On the left-hand side, we have cotangents and tangents. And on the right-hand side, we have cosecant and secant. So a lot of different trigonometric functions. 
my first instinct is to reduce the number of trigonometric functions. So I go to my fallback position and I write everything in terms of sines and cosines. That will reduce the number of trigonometric functions to two instead of four. So we start with the quotient identity for cotangent, which is cosine a over sine a. And the quotient identity for tangent, which is sine a over cosine a. I'm going to do the same thing for the right-hand side. Cosecant a is 1 over sine a. And secant a is 1 over cosine a. Our reciprocal properties. Now, I have everything in terms of sine and cosine, but I still have those algebraic differences with a sum on one side and a product on the other. So what I'm going to do is remove the sum by combining the terms, so I'll have a single term with a common denominator, which would mean that I would multiply the left term by cosine over cosine, and the right term by sine over sine to give us a common denominator of cosine times sine. So now I have cosine squared a plus sine squared a all over the same common denominator of cosine a sine a. Cosine squared a plus sine squared a is a Pythagorean property, and we know that that's equal to 1. So now I have 1 over cosine a sine a. which actually can be written as a product, 1 over cosine a times 1 over sine a, which matches what we have on the right-hand side. Success. Here's a final example. Prove the identity 1 minus cosine b over sine b is equal to sine b over 1 plus cosine b. Now this one has a lot of algebraic differences. We've got sines and cosines, but they're exchanging their places in the numerators and denominators. We have a minus and a plus. So we have to get a little creative in our approach of reducing our differences. I'm going to focus on the differences between numerators and denominators to start with. I see that on the left-hand side, I have sine b in the denominator, but on the right-hand side, I have 1 plus cosine b. If I decide to work on the left-hand side, I'm going to need to end up with a 1 plus cosine b in the denominator. So I'm actually going to create that situation. I'm going to multiply by a fraction that has 1 plus cosine b in the denominator. But since I have to follow the restriction that I can't change the value of the left side or the right side, I have to multiply by 1, which means that I need to put 1 plus cosine b in the numerator as well in my choice to multiply. So now, if I multiply the top, I see that I have 1 plus cosine b times 1 minus cosine b, which is a binomial conjugate. When we multiply by binomial conjugates, we end up with the first term squared minus the second term squared. On the bottom, I still have 1 plus cosine b times sine b. My next step would be to recognize that the top, since I multiplied by conjugates, has been transformed into a Pythagorean property. 1 minus cosine squared b is the same as sine squared b. We place that over our denominator. And hopefully at this point I see that I have 
a sign, sign b in both the numerator and denominator that I can factor out. And that leaves me with sine b over 1 plus cosine b, which matches the right-hand side. Let's recap by discussing the different strategies we can use when we're transforming trigonometric expressions or proving identities. First, start by writing the given expression, or for an identity, by picking the side of the equation you wish to start with and writing it down. Usually it's easier to start with the more complicated side because we can make that more complicated side simpler. There's fewer ways to make things simpler than there are to, to make things more complicated. Second, look for algebraic things to do. For instance, if there are two terms and you want only one term, then add fractions or factor something out. If you multiply by a clever form of 1 in order to multiply a numerator or a denominator by its conjugate binomial, or you can get a desired expression into the numerator or denominator, as we saw in the last example. Actually, the last example applied both of those ideas. Do any obvious calculations. Distribute, square, multiply polynomials, etc. Factor out an expression you want to appear in the result so that you can see if there are things you can cancel out except for that expression. Third, look for trigonometric things to do. Look for familiar tr trigonometric expressions you can transform. If there are squares of functions, think of Pythagorean properties. If you see a cosine squared, think of 1 minus sine squared. If you see a secant squared, think of 1 plus tangent squared. Reduce the number of different functions, transforming them to ones you want in the result. This is my fallback strategy. When in doubt, transform everything to sine and cosine. Leave expressions you want unchanged. Don't mess with something if it's part of your goal. Finally, keep looking at the result and thinking of ways you can get closer to it. If your first strategy doesn't work, go back and try something else. My best advice on proving identities and transforming expressions is to practice, practice, practice.